Dobra. So hello comrades, uh, I am with comrade Professor Bruno Drwenski. We have a lot of subject to talk. So maybe firstly uh, we can talk a little about the elections in France. Could you present what was a position of your organization to the first round and to the second round? For, for the for, for concerning the first round, the, the, there was no um, there was no decision who you have to vote for. But anyway, uh, 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 most of member of the organization did vote for Mélenchon. Uh, some did vote for Roussel, but not a lot. For the candidate of the French Communist Party, the big majority uh, voted for Mélenchon, uh, as as did uh, the majority of of of, uh, of consciously oriented leftist people in France. Uh, whatever they think about Mélenchon, Mélenchon was a tool to sh to mobilize people uh, to try to defeat the uh, the the strategy of Macron to have a, a, a second uh, uh, second round with uh, Macron Le Pen what we have now um, it was almost a success in this sense that Mélenchon get m m almost 22% of the vote, which, wh what is a, a, a success. Um, but unfortunately, he didn't get to the second round because uh, Marine Le Pen has had um, a little bit more than he had. And that's a reason why people on, on the left, some people are quite mad, not at Mélenchon, but at uh, Fabien Roussel from the French Communist Party, because the, he got he got a little bit more than 2% of vote. And this 2% of vote is what, uh, what uh, um, made uh, Marine Le Pen um, 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 to be at the second round. But anyway, what is very important in this election from the point of view of, of let's say, a radical left, it's the fact that a lot of people, of young people, especially from the um, suburbs where people didn't vote normally, uh, did vote uh, in favor of Mélenchon, not because they are enthusiastic about Mélenchon, because Mélenchon can be criticized for a lot of things, but because uh, this uh, candidate was the one uh, that was uh, a, a, a leftist uh, and that was uh, who was talking about uh, social issues, who was taking um, a position on the Russian-Ukrainian conflict, which was not uh, uh, systematically pro-war and pro-NATO and so on and so on. Uh, and because of that, I, I would say that a new layer of, of young people, especially young people coming from immigrant family, uh, join politics. And in this sense, for the long term, it's a good good think, even if um, we are in a burden now because uh, we are still in a situation where, where you, we have the, 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 the choice for the next round between a bad candidate and a bad candidate. Uh, taking into account also the fact that in one month, a little bit more than one month, we will have the parliamentary elections, which will be very important. And I hope that people will be conscious that these in, uh, elections, the parliamentary elections, are important because there are some possibility that the uh, left would be in majority in the parliament, forcing them, then the new president to uh, to take a prime minister not from his um, uh, camp. But anyway, uh, that's for the moment theory, but uh, it is possible. And what is also in, important that in France we have uh, massive strikes and manifestations now, uh, which are um, showing that the uh, society is very, very mad at the situation. Uh, you, you could say, uh, we could observe that during the vote, but not only during the vote, the, the, because we have more, more than 26% of people who didn't vote. And we have to take into account that quite a lot of people who didn't vote this time uh, are not voting because, not because they are politically uh, unconscious, but because they don't believe in the system anymore. So it's a potential opposition, at least for some of them. 
so that's the general situation. But uh, but but in in fact, uh, the, uh, of course, it doesn't change the fact that uh, after the the election, we will have uh, uh, for sure now a, a very bad president. Whatever will be the president, Macron or um, uh, Marine Le Pen, uh, it will be of course uh, for us, for progressive people, uh, a very bad president. Uh, and we will have to to take the street uh, uh, against him, him or her, anyway. Uh, last uh, last days, last weeks, I have a lot of attention to the French politics. Uh, I listen a lot of uh, a lot of politician, and uh, um, I I. I can say that uh, Marine Le Pen, she she changed her posi political position from 2017 yeah. and 2012, and in my opinion, she she changed to the wars. For example, I don't know if yeah. if, if you if you see uh, how now uh, what is her position towards European Union. That uh, yeah, yeah, I say, of course, yeah, yeah, you're you're completely right. Of course, she's much more uh, uh, linked with the system. She's much more uh, linked with the EU uh, than she was. That, that's for sure. Um, and but. That's the bad aspect of the thing. The good one, I would say good, uh, quote, uh, is that uh, uh, if she wants to, to win, she has to pretend that she is uh, uh, socially progressive because it's, of course, the leftist electorate that she has to, uh, to, to take on her side. Of course, it's very difficult for her, but it's important uh, because even if it's, it's, if it's pure demagogy, um, she will not focus on European questions, she will focus on social questions. And it's good uh, 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 that the social questions are, uh, are put uh, uh, on the front uh, and not anymore the national, ethnical, racial, uh, religious and so on. Yes, but uh, she takes this social question uh, in a very stupid way, uh, for example. Yeah, that's right. I, I I can give example to the listeners that um, I, I I saw the debate with um, uh, Gerald Darmanian and the guy oh, yes. Jordan Jean Dar Jordan Barella, or guy. It, the, the yeah. Ger um, um, Gerald Darmanian, he is the Minister of Interior, in, uh, in he is one of the closest uh, uh, companion of, of Macron, and yeah. um, and in this uh, in this uh, debate, uh, he uh, he talks a lot of uh, about the one of the point of the program of Marine Le Pen that she will. Uh, uh, she will not tax uh, uh, people under 30 years old. So he started to to laugh about the rich uh, rich footballers like uh, Mbappe. He, he named Mbappe many times. That uh, Mbappe who who take a lot of money, million of of euros, and he's very very rich, and he's not 30 years old. He will not pay the taxes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and also uh, other, I don't know, rich guys, traders, which uh, are working for the uh, big banks, in, uh, they have 28, 29, they will not pay the taxes. And the poor, uh, poor infirmier, uh, in, yeah, um, 31, uh, yeah. they will pay. And it is... Uh, uh, <laughs> He 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 uh, he talked about this ten minutes, ten minutes all the time. Uh, this guy from France National, he didn't want to speak, and but he all the time uh, he presented himself and he presented Macron like a guy who defended the poor people. It was very funny. yeah yeah yeah. No, you're right, you, you're right, but uh, but uh, still uh, the, uh, in a stupid way. But the social is issue is on the forefront. 
which is better than uh, uh, um, a, 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 what we had a, a, before the first round of the election. Uh, we had a, 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 a political campaign, except for uh, Mélenchon, uh, uh, but um, we had a political campaign uh, a, a, around uh, religious uh, nationalist and uh, and uh, identity uh, uh, subjects. And now now it it, it looks like it's over. And and on that aspect, it's a little bit better situation than we could expect, and that's the result um, of the um, uh, of the relative success of Mélenchon uh, and leftist candidates. Yes, but in, in, I, I would like one more time say something about European Union because yeah, yeah, but you're right concerning we, European we see, Union, of course. We see the evolution of European Union and we see the evolution of Marine Le Pen, but yeah. the problem is that the evolution of European Union, in my opinion, is uh, is going to to bad uh, uh, bad direction in in, la, in last years in and in last weeks we see that uh, the van der yeah. leyen she she take the decision to make a censorship against rt against sputnik against russian media she decided to make a, a sanction against russia she decided to send the military staff to to ukraine it is the european union It changed in in the last weeks the or, militarist organization censorship. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Even totalitarian, and in this even country, if they have no right to do that because formally yes. it's not on it's not on the, yes, yes, the, yes, the yes, EU yes. to decide. But you you see when the European Union starting to be orga a totalitarian organization, Marine Le Pen said, uh, "Now it's good." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're right. You, you're completely right. Of course, of course, you're right, and uh, and uh, and I agree with you. Uh, I, that's why I have no doubt about about her, and I know that if she will be elected, she will be a very bad uh, president. We will have to fight against uh, from the first day she will be elected. I have no doubt that all uh, her discourse about uh, the social issues and so on are just pure demagogy, because basically she. She's a re reactionary, and she will carry on a reactionary policy. Uh, uh, and that's why we have to prepare uh, for two things. We have to prepare social mobilizations, which are already uh, 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 um, uh, functioning, but uh, we have to uh, better organize them to 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 be uh, so they they will be com uh, they will be uh, in in larger cooperation that's one aspect and of course we have to prepare the parliamentary election uh, so to have at least, at least a parliament that will to a, a certain extent help to refrain uh, the reactionary course we will have anyway because uh, if we have macron or if if we have uh, 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 le pen uh, whatever uh, Which which one will be the president doesn't change. That will will have a very tough situation uh, and a very reactionary policy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, I think that you have a little problem with connection. That uh, there is a problem. Uh -huh. yes. No, but uh, yeah, my phone is not uh, very. Uh, no, no, no. But you okay, hear me okay. now. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I uh, I heard you all, all, all the time. Uh, so, uh, and what do you think about the theory that uh, that uh, this uh, change of politics uh, of Marine Le Pen? It is only uh, um, that she is not serious. That uh, she, 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 when she talks about European Union, when she talks about other things, um, it's that she has other program which he, she wants to 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 to, uh, to develop when she will she, she will be elected. But uh, she changed her, her her program in the time of election only to be elected. 
No, 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 no. I'm, I'm convinced she's uh, much more pro-European than her father, for example. Uh, and that's the reason why some leading people in the Front National, which is now the Rassemblement National, left the organization. When I say, and I'm not talking about, uh, um, uh, you know, lower members. I, I'm talking of mem of people who were at the direction of the Front National and who caught with the Front National because uh, they they say that uh, Marine Le Pen is now convinced that she will function uh, within the frame of the European Union. Um, so I, I, I rather think she will be, uh, of course, uh, she's serious when she she's uh, she's not criticizing uh, European Union anymore. Uh, uh, I, I think, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, on this aspect, uh, she's more reactionary than she was, uh, and she she wants to have the the, the support of the big bourgeoisie. Uh, she knows that she needs to have the support of the big, big bourgeoisie because. Pot uh, potentially, even if a lot of people from uh, uh, working class uh, uh, vote for her, uh, basically uh, she is not uh, a working class party. We know that uh, she is a party that needs the, the support of the bourgeoisie, and she will do everything to have the support of the bourgeoisie. Like all uh, all people uh, from the radical right are always trying to have the support of the bourgeoisie, and at a certain moment she will obtain them if she gets. She she is uh, president, but of course on certain conditions, and she's prepared for that conditions. And one of the conditions is, of course, European Union. For the moment, she's still criticizing NATO, but I'm not sure that when she will be elected, she will be so anti-NATO as she as she is not, not really anti-NATO. She wants to have France outside the military organization of NATO, but even that, I'm not sure that she will. Uh, really uh, do it if she's in, uh, in power okay so let's talk about the uh, the biggest subject uh, about huh. war about sanction and firstly I would like ask about um, all this decision of the western countries to cut economical ties with with Russia uh, uh, I would like to talk about the question which existed uh, two months ago or three months ago in the time when they wanted to open the uh, Nord, Stream, uh, Nord Stream 2. And, and when they wanted to, to open Nord Stream 2, they said, we can't allow open Nord Stream 2 2. Nord Stream 2, because it will destroy the Ukrainian economy. Because Ukrainian economy uh, hello? gain. Hello? Hello, hello. I, I am listening. Yeah, I, I don't hear you. I don't know what happened. Yeah, but uh, I don't hear you. Sometimes it uh, cut. Uh, uh, when uh, did you did you heard what I said? I heard the beginning, but the last words uh, I didn't. Yes, yes. So, so uh, I will. I will re re repeat. So, repeat. So, yeah. Uh, so two months ago, when they wanted to open the um, Nord Stream two, they said that it will destroy the Ukrainian economy because eco mm -hmm. Ukrainian economy uh, gain money with transit of gas. Yeah. And now, when when they want to cut economical ties with Russia, logically. It will destroy mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the Ukrainian economy because, because it will uh, uh, yeah. Ukrainian uh, it will it stop to be the transit country which tra uh, the, the, which gain money with transit gas, the transit petrol, yeah. uh, and and uh, other things. <laughs> where is the logic that in the one one way the european all the european countries shown publicly that they they loved they they are in love in ukraine they we we sh we see the the uh, the flag of the ukraine everywhere and in the same time they they would like to make decision which uh, are using their own uh, uh, propaganda it will destroy yeah. the ukrainian economy Yes, but, you know, first of all, I think that all that decisions are not taken in Kiev or in Brussels, they are taken in Washington. Uh, 
basically. Uh, I, I think that the Ukrainian cr crisis showed that Europe, uh, European Union and Germany especially, are not really independent country, uh, even if they tried to uh, uh, at, the, at the very beginning. Because, uh, in fact, the war we have now, it's, uh, uh, of course, a war between Ukraine and Russia, but it's also a war between NATO and Russia, but it's also a war between United States and Europe. Um, because the main issue is, is to cut ties uh, of European economies, not only with Russia, but with all the Eurasia and China. Uh, it's, uh, the, the, the main uh, goal of the United States are to cut the ties that are developing a, a, a along the new, the so-called new Silk Road, um, the transcontinental uh, uh, um, uh, trade between Eastern Asia, Eurasia and Western Europe. And that's the main, main purpose uh, of, this, of this war. Um, uh, uh, and that's that's very important. If we understand that, uh, we understand that European European leaders and Van den Leyen they are not working for the interests of their own uh, uh, country or their own even bourgeoisie. They are uh, 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 working for the interest of the global bourgeoisie, and that's the reason why we observe, especially in Germany, a strong contradiction between what we can hear from, let's say. Um, big uh, uh, German entrepreneurs, which are ra rather tending to have uh, negotiations and cooperations with Russia, with Ukraine, and so on, and uh, the uh, let's say the state apparatus, the military apparatus, the um, the security apparatus, which are warmongers. Um, because, of course, they are much more linked with the United States than they are uh, with the interests of the German industry. Uh, and uh, and this, this is quite important. We have to take into account uh, that. The, as I, 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 I like this formula, that uh, the United States are ready to fight uh, for um, Ukraine to the last Ukrainian soldiers, and they are uh, um, ready to fight for Ukraine to the last point of the um, European uh, GDP. Uh, because, uh, uh, in fact, they are their own interests. And call, uh, talking about, you know, uh, pet, uh, uh, gas and, 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 and oil, uh, nobody did uh, really in the mass media uh, uh, um, react to the fact that the, this, the last week, the United States... Uh, 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 um, decided to import more oil from Russia than before. They also import more uranium from Russia than before, um, and they will have to import more uh, um, um, uh, fertilizers from Russia than before. And they don't care about that. They import more from Russia, but they push the Europeans not to import from Russia gas and so on. So, you know, it's a, um, uh, they push Europe and they push Ukraine to suicide. Uh, but they have the tools to do it because they control a large part of the uh, of the European bureaucracy and of the uh, uh, all the corrupt system in Europe and of course in Ukraine. I will explain you why because most of the corrupted people in Europe and in Ukraine put their money in, in, uh, in um, so-called um, um, uh, financial heavens, which are under the protection, under the control of the United States. So uh, if people uh, uh, want to be more independent from the United States, they will have their money, money confiscated, just like the Russian oligarchs had uh, recently. Uh, and because of this, uh, Europe cannot have an independent policy, I mean, and Germany especially, and of course Ukraine, uh, not to talk about Ukraine. And what will be the future of uh, dollar and euro? Because one of the... One <laughs> That's of the very important. We, the, 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 uh, the money serves for a few things. One of the things which is the role of the money, it is the uh, something which you can exchange for something. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can exchange it in international way. When dollar and, and euro is controlled by the Western states 
and they said that the Russian can't have dollar. In this way, the, the dollar and euro, it's not longer a money. It's not longer That's... international money that you can travel in, in international ways. So. Yeah, yeah, you point a very important uh, uh, issue, a basic issue. When uh, whatever we think about the, uh, the decision of, of, of Russia and Putin to attack Ukraine, one of the very important aspects of the, this war is the fact that it's an economical war. And for Russia, but not only for Russia, uh, it was, this, was, was, uh, this war was prepared as an attack toward the hegemony of dollar uh and what I'm, when i say that it was prepared it was prepared not only by russian because now it ha it appears that uh, uh, russia prepared this war of course in cooperation with china which was which is not very uh, a big surprise but what is the surprise that this war was also uh, more or less coordinated with india and brazil uh and we see now uh, brazil india saudi arabia Uh, deciding that they can um, um, trade in other values than dollar. Uh, they can take uh, Chinese yuan, Indian rupee, uh, um, uh, Russian ruble, and so on and so on. So it's very important. I would point to you one very important uh, article, in fact, in an interview, which was given by uh, Glaziev. Glaziev is the Russian minister of um, uh, Eurasian integration. And um, in, he, he made an interview for, 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 for in English for the journal The Cradle. Uh, you can find it on the internet. And I, I, I think we have to, 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 to know this article because he explains that uh, 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 the war Russia is carrying on now, it's a war against the global hegemony of the United States. Uh, it's the, a war uh, against the uh, Western world uh, model centrism. Uh, it's a war for a new paradigm. But what is very important uh, also in this interview is that he's showing that it's also an internal war in Russia. Uh, between the um, pro, let's say, Eurasian uh, um, uh, tendency within the government and the pro-Western one, which is which uh, he obviously in this interview, he's minister of the go Russian government, but he he tells that uh, Nabulina, the, the 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 director of the National Bank of Russia, is still uh, working in favor of the MI um, of the IMF and the Washington consensus. In fact, he, in fact, he's telling he, she's a, 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 an enemy within Russian uh, state. Um, and th that's very important because we, have, we, we observe that this war is an internal war in Russia. It's a, 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 a war between the global South and the West. Uh, and it's also a, a war between NATO, United States and Russia. And of course, a war between Ukraine and Russia. So it's a, it's a multi-layer layer war, and we have to take that into account. And this war was prepared because Glaziev is, te is telling that, in fact, um, uh, 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 the, 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 the question to launch the economical war against the West was uh, developing for years. The, 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 the Ukrainian issue was only the, the, the point of starting of this war, but uh, th this war was an economical war. And what was also very imp interesting is that Glaziev, he's a Russian minister, but it's, he's an Ukrainian. He's coming from, uh, from Zaporozhye. He, he, his hometown is in Ukraine. Um, uh, and we have, when we talk about Ukrainian public opinion, we have also, we have to, 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 to think about the fact that we have 5 million Ukrainians who um, uh, are living in Russia now uh, and who uh, <laughs> choose by their foot, I would say, the Russian side up to the uh, level of ministers. Uh, which is also quite important for, you know, for at least a, a sentimental re re reason. We have to take that into account. So this war is, is a very um, complicated war, but it's a, um, it's a war between uh, multipolarity and unipolarity. Uh, and that's why uh, 
according to me, uh, of course, the military aspect of this war is important, but it's not the main aspect, because if we look really on the ground what is happening in Russia, in Ukraine, it's a little war. Um, it, uh, there are very little fights, in fact. Uh, we have bombings, but bombings of what? We have bombings of facilities of, of oil uh, um, uh, storage uh, um, equipment, uh, of, stor of oil storage and, and munition storage. But basically, the front line are not uh, uh, really uh, changing. The only w region where there are real fights is Donbass. And it's very important. Of course, e each war is also uh, always terrible. But if we look at the number of victims, I'm talking about civil victims, um, we have only 10% of a victim we had in the same time uh, in Iraq, for example, when the American invaded Iraq. So it's a little war comparing to uh, the war we have uh, all over the world. Uh, that's first thing. The second thing that if we look at that war um, on the military aspect, the Russians have, uh, have uh, uh, more or less half the quantity of troops the Ukrainians have in front of them. And this shows that the uh, Russians are not really um, uh, acting in, in, toward a military offensive that would have, uh, um, they, they didn't plan to conquer Kiev and big cities and so on. What they are doing is just to make the Ukrainian economy, which already is very uh, on low level, to make the, 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 the Ukrainian economy dying. Uh, and as soon as the uh, Ukrainian economy will die, uh, then we will have the real question, because would Europe accept to pay for free to support the Ukrainian state? Because, um, you know, in, in, in a couple of weeks or maybe months, uh, you, you will not have food in, 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 in Ukrainian shop. You will, you will have shortages, or, uh, terrible shortages. And uh, does Europe is ready to uh, maintain uh, the uh, average economical level uh, to finance the Ukrainian state and the Ukrainian economy so this economy dis d d does not collapse. Um, of course, I'm talking about Europe because it's obvious that the Americ uh, Americans will never pay one cent uh, uh, in favor of Ukraine. They want the European to pay and to finance this war. They want to have the, 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 the advantage of this war, but they, they don't want to pay for it. They want the European to pay for it. And now the, the, the basic question will be, will the European agree to finance a, 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 a non-existing state, because the state of Ukraine is not really existing, uh, will they accept uh, to finance the basic needs uh, of the Ukrainian population in case uh, the uh, Ukrainian economy collapse. So I think that the Russians are mostly um, uh, uh, fighting on the economical ground, even in Ukraine, uh, and that we have, of course, to take into account the military aspect of the war, but the most important aspect of the war is the economical one, because um, as soon as the Ukrainian economy collapses, uh, the military will collapse also. Uh, uh, so uh, what will do Ukrainian government uh, when they will uh, have a, a, an economical uh, collapse? Um, will they uh, obtain help from the West? What I doubt. Uh, or will they capitulate or negotiate with, with Russia uh, new conditions? Uh, not only on the uh, uh, security uh, issue, but also on economical issue, because um, Ukrainian economy had to be rebuilt before the war, because um, Ukrainian economy is ruined. Uh, uh, um, uh, Ukraine is one of the poorest countries in Europe, uh, and it was when Ukraine became independent in, in 1991, Ukraine was one of the richest Soviet Republic at that time. But now it's not anymore the case, and it was not anymore the case be before the beginning of the war. So you can, of course, imagine um, what will be the state, what is the state already of the uh, Ukrainian economy uh, since the beginning of the war. Officially, 
Kiev government um, uh, is telling that um, the productive capacity of the Ukrainian industry, which are already very low, the, 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 the industrial capacity of the Ukrainian industry, they function now at 40% of what they functioned before the war. So it's already a collapse. Uh, uh, so what will happen in two or three months? So that's, will, that's uh, the point. I would like to say that um, um, now in the time of the election in France, when uh, the, the question of the uh, ener uh, energetic, ah, yeah. energetic transformation uh, was very important. They said many things which are connected with Ukraine, because, yeah. uh, for example, Melanchon, he said a, a thing that we need to build uh, green energy in France. We need to build the hydraulic, uh, 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 hydraulic. I, I don't know how how it uh, barrage. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The hydraulic. Yeah, you can say yeah. Hydraulic. So, so he wanted he wants to build something in France now in 2022, which exists. In, in, in which exists in Ukraine since 1950s, since time of Stalin. Yeah, of course. Uh, no, uh, earlier, in, in the 1930s. Only in Dnieper, only in Dnieper, I think there is eight or ten uh, hydraulic, yeah. very, very big. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, what else in Poland? Right. The, the, we have ex the discussion uh, since uh, I don't know 20 years that we need in Poland uh, build the first. Polish atomic energy, energy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in Ukraine, there are four. There are four energy. Uh, yeah. So, so you see, so yeah, yeah. from this only from this energy uh, perspective, Ukraine can be one of the richest uh, country in the Europe. But it should uh, be. It should be. It, it, it was uh, one of the richest country. But, uh, you know, uh, 30 years of plundering made that ex economy exhausted because the, the oligarchic regime of Ukraine uh, uh, um, functioned like that. And, and we have to know that one of the reasons of the Ukrainian-Russian war is also a question of regime, uh, of the different regime. Whatever we think about Putin, I, I'm not a fan of Putin uh, autocratic uh, oligarchic regime. But anyway, the, the Russian... Uh, um, uh, regime is a, a regime that was put in power after the collapse of Russian economy during Yeltsin times, uh, because during Yeltsin time we had oligarchs, it means capitalist, uh, Russian capitalist, who decided what to do, who we, who will be nominated, and what the government should do. Um, there was no Russian government; the, the, the real government was in the hands of this capitalist oligarch um, in Russia, and the situation was so bad at the end of 90s in Russia that even the more cle the cle the more clever one uh, people inside the government began to understand that they had, there should be some change and as I, I remember the interview of the um, daughter of Yeltsin uh, uh, telling at the uh, at an interview for a western paper that if uh, there are no change in Russia there will be a communist revolution so uh, they accepted Putin as a compromise because Putin uh, reintroduced some state uh, uh, policies and reintroduce the fact that the uh, capitalists must at least pay some taxes to the Russian government. And it, it, the result is that the, uh, uh, Ru Russia is back, I would say. But in Ukraine, we had not this situation. In, in Ukraine, we have still the Yeltsin type of government. It means the government of Ukraine is nothing. He's not working. Uh, he's just an administrative um, uh, 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 organism working for the oligarchs. Uh, uh, the oligarchs are the real bosses in Ukraine. And that's why uh, uh, if Russia was plundered 10 years, uh, uh, Ukraine was plundered 30 years. Uh, and that's the reason why now, when, when we compare, for example, Belarus with, with Ukraine, when Belarus became independent in the same time as Ukraine in 1991, 
the, the, the GDP and the level of life of the both uh, former Soviet republics were more or less the same. Now the Ukraine is half the Belarusian level of life, um, which is very important because, of course, as we know, uh, 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 Belarus never uh, 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 disappeared as a state, and the state administration was always working, and it was always a more or less socially oriented state. So that's why the, uh, the, the situation is better in Belarus than in Russia, and the situation in Russia is better than in Ukraine. Um, and that's the reason why Ukrainian economy is, 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 is not working, uh, because, uh, because it's a plundering, it's a, you know, it's a typical uh, 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 plundering economy uh, without any real development. Uh, and that's also the reason why you have 10 million Ukrainians who left the country. Uh, since in the independence in 1991. Uh, 10 millions out of a population of 52 millions. Officially, uh, Ukraine had 52 million in the, uh, people and when it became independent. Officially, now they have 40 million. Of course, they lost Crimea and Donbass, but still, uh, they should have more than 30, 40 million. And that's officially. Uh, some people say that perhaps they have less than that. Uh, you know, the massive immigration of Ukraine is, is a fact for already 30 years. Uh, so there is no such thing like Ukrainian economy. There is no such thing like Ukrainian state. You have um, army, uh, armed group linked with the army, mostly uh, right-wing, uh, far-right-wing groups, and uh, you have oligarch, and you have Zelensky, who is supposed to be president, but who is a puppet of the, uh, of his main uh, oligarch, which is uh, um, Kowomoyski, uh, which is more, who is more or less associated with Akhmetov, uh, the man who is owning uh, the, Az um, the Azovstal uh, factory, where the, we have fight now in, in, in Mariupol. So it means he lost as, uh, um, uh, um, Azov, Azovstal since this uh, uh, factory will be destroyed or, or is already destroyed anyway. Um, so that's that's the situation now we have in Ukraine, uh, and 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 that's the reason why uh, uh, Ukrainian oligarchs they fight against Russia because not because they are anti-Russian, they they are using anti-Russian feelings, but they are not anti-Russian. They can be sold to everybody who 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 paid them well. But why they fight against Russia? It's because they don't want to have a, a, a Russian a, a state. Uh, rebuilt in Ukraine, uh, as we had a state rebuilt in, in Russia under Putin. Okay, so I, I, I will say to the um, people who are in the chat, if you have some question to Bruno, you can uh, add this question now. Yeah, but and... you have, will have to, to read me them, because um, on my phone it's very okay, little and okay, I cannot okay. read. Okay, uh, and I would like to say something about Poland. I don't know if you... Huh, it's yeah. it, 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 it's a, uh, a little secret news, but it is so... It's so... <laughs> I don't know. So so stupid that I need to, to publish that uh, for, for the people from all over the world. So in, in Poland, <laughs> uh, since uh, 30 years, uh, we have a very small... A first May demonstration organized by Piotr Ikonowicz. Uh, it is yeah. uh, it is in the traditional way. It was it was small demonstration which was against a, a little bigger demonstration organized by the Social Democratic Alliance with the trade union opposite Z. Uh, so uh, many years uh, they they uh, organized only this this manifestation to be against this manifestation of the uh, social democrats but uh, since i don't know a few years the uh, social liberals they stopped organize the first may demonstration so and ikonovich he is the only one who organized the first may demonstration something. in, in war uh, yes 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 uh, in last years in last years uh, he he stopped to organize this demonstration i think two years ago 
ago he was in Łódź uh, because of the electoral campaign to the European election. And there are other people who organized this, especially the collective Historia Czerwona. But there was a meeting a few days ago. A few days ago, there was a meeting, mm -hmm. uh, some, some, some re, uh, reunion mm -hmm. of, of the people who wanted to organize the first main demonstration in, in Warsaw. And Ikonovic, uh, he wanted to uh, organize, and, and uh, I think that he will, he will organize the first main demonstration in Warsaw. Mm -hmm. And this is a question for you, where? He won't change a place. Change, where? change a place where? Ah, you, you didn't you didn't hear. Uh, I don't uh, I don't know. I did, uh, in, I, I, front, I guess you uh, there is something in front of Russian ambassy. Ambassy. Uh, oh no. So, yes, oh. yes. So, so, so this year the, the first main the first main demonstration in, in Poland it, it will be a uh, Russophobic demonstration, and also some people who, with with Ikonowicz, um, they decided that the Komunistyczna uh, Partia Polski, Communist Party of Poland, oh, yeah. Polish Workers Party, and other organization which are against NATO, uh, there are uh, they are banned. Out, it's, it's for, out, out. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's I. Uh, I always That's knew terrible. That. What I, I, I couldn't imagine because I thought Mikonovic, as I look at his Facebook, it's uh, he's not very clear about the, the Ukrainian war. But uh, I, I couldn't imagine he's uh, so uh, he's uh, pushed in the direction of of, of uh, uh, pro NATO, pro aggressive, and pro Ukrainian, pro fascist Ukrainian uh, tendencies. Uh, it's a no, complete no, no. collapse. It's, I, I don't know. I don't know what is uh, his intention, but he said he knew that in front of the uh, Russian ambassador, there are all the time the journalists, and he wants to be. Yeah, but uh, still, but. Uh... I, I, yes, mm -hmm. I, I know that it will be. It is only the to to uh, because uh, his strategy is going to the media, and he wants to be that uh, relate that there is a relation from this demonstration in the uh, government media like TVP Info or yeah. stuff like this. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand, but it's uh, it's a complete moral ruin to do that. I, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, uh, and uh, uh, and it will be uh, for the whole world uh, a shame that somebody whatever you think about russia and the russian policy in ukraine but uh, uh, it will be a shame for every leftist group in the world that some leftist group organized a manifestation uh, on anti russia slogans um, uh, since there is one ba basic thing i always rem rem remind people um, at the beginning of the first World War, we had the so-called uh, social traitors who decided to take side on the war uh, on the side of their own imperialism. Uh, German social democracy on the side of German imperialism and uh, French and, and, and um, uh, English uh, socialists in the side of uh, English and uh, French uh, imperialism. And you had, uh, of course, uh, at the very beginning, a tiny group of people, uh, of real socialists, uh, who decided that uh, it's not the, 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 the way you have to do, and we know the name of Rosa Luxemburg Luxembourg um, and Karl Liebknecht in Germany, uh, Jean Jaurès who was killed in France and so on and so on, who, who stayed to the line uh, uh, against imperialism. And one of the basic fundamental base of, uh, of socialism and internationalism is that you have to fight your own, first, you have to fight your own imperialism and to let people from the other side of the front fight their own imperialism. So what we think about Russia is a, um, a, a Russia is or not an imperialist country 
uh, it's the question of the Russian left. But uh, Western left, NATO member of the left, they have to find their to fight their own imperialism first, not the Russian one, the Western one. So uh, if you are in Poland, you have to find to fight against the the, the imperialism which is uh, uh, which is uh, working in Warsaw. Not the one which is in in Moscow or, or in whatever you want, um, uh, other city, and that's the fundamental uh, principle of leftism, of internationalism, um, of revolutionary movement. So if you betray that, you're just on the same side as did the social traitors in 1914 in Germany, in France and England. So it's not anymore uh, uh, Marxist, it's not anymore revolutionary, uh, it's uh, pure opportunism. Uh, and of course, the history has decided that these uh, um, social democrats uh, were on the side of bandits. Uh, and now we have a, a world war, because whatever we think about the Ukrainian-Russian uh, war, it's a war that began in 2014, not now, in 2014 in the Donbass. And this war is a war, um, uh, is becoming now, as I told you, economically speaking, a world war. So if it's a world war, we have to fight our own imperialism. And our own imperialism uh, in Warsaw, it's the NATO imperialism. Let the Russian and the Russian progressive people uh, uh, deal with their own government, their own system. And if they think uh, that Russia is an imperialist country, against their own imperialism. But Poland has to fight against the imperialism which is uh, uh, functioning, which is existing in Warsaw, the NATO imperialism. And I think that every uh, uh, people in the world uh, will never consider that NATO is a peace alliance, but NATO is obviously uh, uh, an imperialist alliance. The whole history of this, uh, of this alliance is proving that. So we cannot uh, uh, cease the war against NATO, the anti-imperialist war against NATO, the war against the war monger of NATO. Um, uh, we have to carry it on now, like yesterday, like tomorrow. And, uh, and what is your comment to this uh, censorship uh, towards the Marxists in Poland who are not supporting NATO, that uh, you can't c come to, to first main demonstration. It's, no, uh, I mean... It's, it's poor McCarthy. I, 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 I would have been Marxist in Warsaw. I would have never uh, 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 take street in front of the Russian embassy. Um, uh, so anyway... Uh, to be kicked out uh, <laughs> for me it's uh, uh, it's not very uh, very uh, uh, important because uh, anyway you have not to be there uh, i hope that the marxists in poland will will hold a, a maybe a little but at least a meeting uh, somewhere in the center of warsaw i would i would like that and i would prefer that um uh, um you know the situation is so stupid. It's it's exactly like if the for the first May in Moscow, the communists would prepare a, a, a manifestation in front of the U.S. embassy. Of course, right. I mean the communists in Moscow they do, they they don't want they, they prepare the first May manifestation uh, along the traditional uh, uh, place of the uh, Russian working class. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> yes, I'm yes, really but astonished by what you are tell telling, because I, for I me, it's so know, obvious. I don't know it is, if they decided that they want, the, they will uh, make demonstration in front of Russian ambassade, but they already decided but uh, that it's, um, uh, it's uh, that this demonstration... Ah, no, this demonstration there will be in the traditional place or in front of Russian ambassade or other place. Uh, uh, but uh, one sh one thing which is sure is without any communist and any leftist, uh, any any people 
who are saying that the biggest threat of to the humanity is the expansion of NATO. And... Yeah, the, 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 things are clear now. It's exactly the situation we had in 1914. It's, it's exactly the same situation. So they took side. It's very clear. I, I, for me, it's even good because things things are um, are clear, uh, uh, and you know. Every every people uh, see who is who, so that's good, in a certain sense. Of course, that's bad tactically for the moment because uh, uh, social traitors all over Europe are uh, uh, stronger than socialists and communists. Uh, but uh, you know, in 1914. Uh, you know, Lenin, Luxembourg, Liebknecht, uh, uh, Jean Jaurès and, do- and all those, they were in strong minority. But at the end of the day, uh, the history, they did the history of the world of the 20th century uh, and not the social democracy. Uh, all revolution we had in the 20th century were made by people who uh, took the side uh, against imperialism in 1914. Uh, all over the world, not only in Europe. And that's the second point I think we have to focus on. It's that those so-called leftists uh, in Europe do not understand that 90% of the humankind is living outside Europe. And when you look um, at where in the world we have real, real mass movement, uh, left or uh, mass movement, we have them in countries where uh, uh, left is organized uh, uh, against radical anti-imperialism. You know, last week, last year, excuse me, we had a, a year-long um, strike of peasants in India, and we had a, a, a general strike of 200 million workers in India, workers and peasants in India, the biggest strike in the world. Um, and of course, it was uh, t- to a large extent led by the, the local communists. Uh, you know, when you have behind you 250 million uh, and you have some hundred people in front of the Russian embassy in Warsaw, you know, everything is clear who is who and who represent what. And I'm talking about India, but you can talk about all other countries in the world. I have some contacts in, uh, with, you know, Africans, Latin Americans, Arabs. Uh, they are all um, uh, uh, observing the Russian-Ukraine conflicts, not as a Russian Ukrainian conflict, but as a world conflict of um, old American imperialism uh, and growing powers. Some of them are capitalists like Russia. Some of them are not really capitalists like Iran or China. Uh, Not to talk about Cuba, of course. But anyway, the anti-hegemonic or counter-hegemonic countries are on the forefront of a new uh, uh, economical world paradigm. And uh, left forces uh, all over the world, the Venezuela, the Cuba, the Bolivia, uh, the Communist Party of South Africa, the Communist Party of Russia, the Communist Party of India, um, uh, not to talk about North Korea, not to talk about Vietnam, not to talk about China, uh, uh, not to talk about Palestine, uh, etc., etc. They all understand that this war is a war against the American hegemony. Uh, even if they can criticize, and for obvious reasons, the decision made by Russia that could have been another decision and so on and so on. But basically, the conflict, the root of the conflict, uh, the root of the conflict are linked with um, um, the question of uh, uh, of to fight against unipolar world and the uh, domination of the US dollar. Um, And, and, you know, the, 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 the European left in a large, to a large extent, is so ghettoized, so uh, cut from the world trends, that uh, it doesn't understand um, uh, 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 what is happening. And that's the reason why they have no success. I mean, what means the, 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 the left in Poland now? It's a group of people which are coming from the intelligentsia. They have nothing to do with the working class. Of course, sometimes they are doing things in favor of workers, but they are not workers. Where are the workers? Uh, of course, it's a pity that a lot of workers in 
Poland are, are voting for peace and the right-wing government. But it's, who, who is responsible of that, if not the, the left? Um, uh, the last left people we had in Poland was killed, as you know, it's Andrzej Leper. Uh, it, he was coming from the uh, 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 working class. We can criticize what he did here or there, but anyway, he was uh, class-based. And you remember as he was uh, um, treated with, with, uh, with, you know, arrogance by those leftist uh, uh, intellectuals uh, most of them, not Ikonovich. Ikonovich was okay in that case, but um, most of 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 those of those uh, uh, so-called leftists uh, treated him, you know, as a as a man who shouldn't be in politics because it, politics is their speciality of of intellectuals. But what is this left? This left is is a couple of 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 people. Um, we 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 completely disconnected from the world trends, as I told you, but completely disconnected from the Polish masses. And that's the reason why Polish masses are going to the to the right. We have the same situation in a lot of countries, in Hungary, to a certain extent also in France, because uh, if Marine Le Pen is so strong, uh, or Zemmour, it's also because for years the left in France was also uh, on the side of social traitors. Now it's changing, of course, it's good, but still uh, uh, there is a burden of that, those years which is working uh, and, and has its effects. But, you know, European left, what is European left? I mean, what is left from the European left now? We have to ask that question. Uh, and what, uh, and uh, what do you think? Why in the, uh, there is so big difference between the politic of Kaczynski and politic of Orban? Because many years they were presented like a big ally, allies uh, in the international level that all these countries were together against the politic of the uh, European Commission. And today uh, we see that the Polish government of uh, PIS is crazy. But uh, the government of Orban is one of the, I don't know, uh, only one government in, in European Union which is a little r rationalist. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I think that the, 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 the main issue is, you know, Poland is a more important country than Hungary. Uh, and I think that the U.S. Uh, agencies, uh, it means the U.S. secret services and the U.S. NGOs, uh, concentrated on Poland uh, already in the 80s, but of course uh, uh, after 1999 much more, and um, they managed to control the police, poli the police political elite. They did. They, they never imagine uh, had the the idea at that time that Hungary, which was supposed to be traditionally a much more right-wing country, a much more Russophobic country than Poland, uh, they didn't, um, because in fact, Pol Polish nation, Polish society is not traditionally so Russophobic as it, uh, it is said now. Um, if you look at the history in the 19th century or 20th century, uh, it's not so, uh, so uh, extreme as it is now. Um, even in the interwar period, uh, you had uh, a strong um, uh, um, tendencies in the Polish society to find some compromise with, with Moscow and so on. Uh, but Hungary was traditionally uh, anti-Russian. Uh, so I think that they never uh, supposed that a little country, not very important, not having access to the sea, uh, could, um, could uh, 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 change its mind uh, in a such, let's say, radical mind, uh, way, whatever we think about Orban. Orban, of course, is a, a right-wing uh, populist leader as Kaczynski, but uh, still he has um, uh, his brain and he understood that the, uh, his tiny country will never have any help from the Western world if he doesn't um, use his country as a, you know, as a, uh, uh, in the world balance of power. And having good contacts, not only with Russia, but especially with China, 
but also with Turkey, whatever we think about Turkey. Um, uh, he made out of Budapest the main uh, trade center for China in, uh, in Eastern Europe. Normally, geographically speaking, it should have been Warsaw. But it's Budapest, and it's you know very very old uh, go away. I mean, he at the very beginning of his government, he 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 made of Budapest the trade center of Chinese uh, export, and he developed contact with Turkey. Whatever we think with about Turkey, but you know, Turkey is not a pure pro NATO country. It's also a country balancing. So having good contact with Turkey, having good contact with China, having good contact with uh, Russia, now he has a, a position. He is able to negotiate with Western powers, not on a position of equality because Hungary is a little country, but still on a position they don't really know what to do with him. Um, and uh, uh, and it's a very intelligent policy when you have uh, are the leader of a, of a tiny country. In Poland, the tragedy is that Poland is is not a completely tiny country like Hungary, but it's not a very big country. But the problem of Polish elite, they think they are at the, they, they they are at the uh, top of a potential uh, power. Poland is not a power. Of course, it's more or less 40 million people. Hungary is 10 million people. But still, what is the Polish economy? What Pol Poland is producing? What Poland represents? But Poland is, is not able to be a power. But there is this dream that we, Paul, we can be uh, powerful. I was very, uh, you know, uh, I was laughing yesterday when I read in the Polish press, I don't remember which which uh, which uh, paper, but anyway, it's not important because they are all the same. Uh, 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 and I, I read a, 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 a you know a declaration that it's the time to make a real Polish-Ukrainian alliance for the future of Europe. But it's so stupid because. Whatever you think about Ukrainians and Ukrainian nationalists and Ukrainian oligarchs or whatever you want, they don't need Poland. They can go directly to Berlin or Washington. They don't need Poland. Poles, Polish elite are thinking that the Ukrainian will be you know, grateful to Poland because Poland are helping them and that they will do a, a new commonwealth in the future. Ukrainians don't need Polish commonwealths. They, they, if they want to be to go westward, they will go west directly to the big capital of Europe, to 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 Germany, to 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 United States, eventually to France, but it's not very sure. But anyway, Warsaw is for them completely unimportant. It's still a provincial capital. Um, uh, Poland is a provincial state. Orban knows Hungary is a provincial state, and that's why he's clever. Because he knows what, are, what is the reality, and that uh, taking this reality as a fact, he's fighting for the interests of his country at the best. But Polish leaders, Polish elite, they think that you know the Polish Commonwealth that existed in the 16th century will be rebuilt. That's pure nonsense. That's stupid. That will never happen, because Poland, Poland has not the force to do it and Poland has no mean to do it and Poland is not needed. Ukrainians, Belarusians, Lithuanians, whatever their political uh, 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 um, aim is, uh, is to develop West or East, but not with Poland, with bigger powers already. Um, and, and that's important. The second thing we think that a lot of Poles, they are uh, telling now that, oh, maybe the Russian will invade Poland. But it's pure stupidity. I mean, for the Russian, Poland is not important at all. 
Poland is not an important country anymore. For them, what is important is the relation they have with China, with India on one side, with Germany, with United States on the other side. But it's not Poland. I mean, for them, Poland is nothing. They don't need Poland. They even don't need Ukraine now. They just want to, Ukraine not to be a base of, of NATO. But they don't need Ukraine because now Russia is exporting wheat. They don't need any more like they, they need in the ni uh, 19th century Ukraine, because at, in the 19th century, uh, Ukraine was feeding Russia. But now it's not feeding Russia. Russia is ex exporting its own wheat. They don't need the Ukrainian wheat. They, they export um, uh, 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 wheat, they export oil, they export uh, gas, they export urine, they export uh, uh, cosmo uh, cosmonautic uh, technology, they export... Uh, um, uh, cool. um, uh, um, fertilizers they export everything russia they don't need uh, uh, little countries like poland uh, and so on but of course russia uh, uh, remarked that on the european map there is a little tiny country which is uh, hungary and this can be a partner because there is a leader in hungary that wants to be a partner of russia russia export also a coal and there is yeah of course uh, yeah that's right yeah, yeah. yeah. The, russia export everything needed for energy uran mm -hmm. for uh, atomic energy coal for uh, um, uh, electric energy uh, oil and uh, and and gas for uh, also energy so and uh, of course and russia exports all, uh, has the produce the produce uh, the produce uh, gold which is very important because one of the main uh, fight now is to have money based on gold uh, as a substitute to the dollar. And Russia has, has its money based uh, more and more on gold, like does China. And talking about energy, Russia also ex uh, exports the minerals which which you need to produce the battery for the yeah that, right all, yeah you're right yeah 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 that's right. There so I always say to to the Polish uh, ultra Catholics, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, if you have if you are real Catholics, go to God, and complain to Him that he made Russia so, so rich. <laughs> there is because, a question. Uh, uh, pardon? Uh, there is a question for you. Regarding yeah, the you... communist parties in Europe, what do you think is the reason they felt of heart after Soviet collapse? Is it because of revisionism, failure in dialectics, disconnects from the masses or any other reason? Uh, all these reasons are, are right. Uh, uh, there is revol uh, in most communist party of Europe, maybe not all, because it's not really the case for Portuguese party and Greek party, but most of 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 of, uh, of, of, of communist party were were, were revisionists uh, already before the collapse of Soviet Union. But of course, the collapse of Soviet Union ha helped in this direction, uh, and uh, of course. Uh, um, uh, uh, the other reason uh, I, 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 I forgot where, where the, the, the reason uh, were, but uh, was uh, uh, revisionism, failure in dialectics, disconnect yeah. from the masses. Yeah, but failure of dialectic led to revisionism, so it's linked, uh, and of course, and this le lead to the uh, disconnection of masses, and that's that's a process we had in Soviet Union, and we had in in Western European Communist Party the same. Is that uh, you know these parties became more and more bureaucratized, uh, more and more electoralists, and you know um, to be member of the Communist Party was a, 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 a possibility of career uh, so more and more people did join the party because in their city their uh, in their uh, circumscription uh, you had a communist party which was strong uh, and you can you could do local at least a career within the communist party but if you join communist party for careerist reason you don't join it because you want revolution um, so it became a middle class party uh, and it finished uh, as it finished because uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 proletarians, people, working class, they are 
uh, even when they go to church, they are very materialistic in their behavior. So they always prefer uh, uh, not the copy, but the original. So uh, uh, if you go right, it's better to have right wing, real right wing, than to have a, a, a pseudo left, which is right wing. Uh, and that's the reason why uh, those parties did, uh, did disappear. And what is very interesting, they didn't disappear in the rest of the world. I mean, the Japanese Communist Party, the Indian Communist Party, the Brazilian Communist Party, the, uh, the South African Communist Party, they are still very strong in their countries uh, because they are not disconnected with masses. They are not a revisionist and they know what means dialectic. So when they... they uh, have an opinion, let's say, on the Ukrainian-Russian war, it's a dialectic opinion. They are not uh, pro-Putin or anti-Putin. They are not pro-Ukraine or anti-Ukraine, but they can uh, understand what are the dialectic of these conflicts and on which side, uh, on which, which is the uh, aspect uh, um, uh, of this conflict that can be s uh, seen as progressive and which one which can be seen as reactionary. Uh, it's not black and white. But I think that we need to add the very uh, difficult situation after Second World War, when yeah. in the United uh, yeah. States we have all this uh, McCarthyist uh, hysteria. It is very, uh, very actual to... to yeah, to it's, it's to... even worse, I would say now. Yes, but but you, you know that... that um, uh, after Second World War, we have all this anti-communist pressure in the Western countries. In Greece, we yeah. have the we have the killing yeah, of the, the, the communists, uh, and in other other, yeah. I, I think that in all uh, all the Western countries there was uh, repressions toward communists. So after uh, when they destroyed uh, with this um, with this hard uh, repression, they destroyed this revolutionary potential of these parties. After it was easy to this uh, all these right. things towards revisionism, disconnected from the masses. But uh, you know you know uh, in the situation in the late 40s and beginning of 50s. In, in these communist parties was very, very difficult. So uh, it's... Yeah, it is right. But on the other side, you can also note, note that the, the countries where the communists were the more repressed, like Greece and Portugal, uh, are the country where you have still quite uh, strong communist parties. Because, you know, in a dictatorship, when you are communist, you are ready to risk your life. Uh, the bourgeois life make people, uh, and especially leaders, more and more uh, tending to, you know, to, to opportunistic behaviors. Uh, uh, okay, I, I would like, uh, uh, it was the question which I wanted to ask before, but I, I forget. <laughs> uh, yeah. What, what is your take uh, toward the expansion of NATO in the Scandinavia? Because now there is a Sweden ah. and Finland who want to join in NATO. And for example, Sweden was uh, is a neutral country since 19th century. Even Hitler, yeah. when he yeah. tried to uh, unite Europe, he didn't want it, uh, he, he didn't finish with neutrality with Sweden. And NATO mm -hmm. now wants to take Sweden and Finland in one uh, in one moment and uh, i am very i am very scared about this because yeah, yeah you are uh, on one side you are you are right to be scared and on the other side it's a, it's a, there is something positive in that i, I will explain why i'm talking like that uh, um, in, in, in of course it's uh, it's scaring and it's dangerous because especially finland has a very long uh, border with russia and it means that there will be a, a colossal military investment on both sides um, and the, the reason of tensions will be much more than they are now. So it's a very dangerous thing and, and it's scaring for, those, for that reason. On the other side, there is a good uh, quote aspect of this because it means that the West is much more totalitarian than it was earlier. The, the West uh, in the 50s was enough strong 
the United States were enough strong to tolerate such uh, uh, neutral states like Ireland, like Switzerland, like Sweden, like Finland. Now, even in Switzerland, they are pushing them in, in, inside the NATO. They are using Ireland inside the NATO, even if formally still neutral. Uh, and they are pushing um, Sweden and, 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 and F Finland inside NATO. And it's very, um, it shows that the West is losing. They must use administrative control over these countries because they cannot use any more um, uh, indirect form of influence. So it means that it doesn't work anymore, their, their system. They have to be more and more uh, authoritarian, more and more totalitarian. Uh, and it's the sign that this system is finishing. Of course, it will be very tough. It will be very hard. Uh, it will be very dangerous. And I'm not optimistic on that aspect. But if you look at the long term, if hum humankind survives um, this short-term uh, uh, period, uh, uh, then it means that the West is finished. And that all what we have now, NATO, European Union, all these structures are just collapsing. Um, and that's why they are so nervous. That's why they are so authoritarian. That's why they are to, uh, beginning more and more totalitarian, because they cannot support not only Sweden and, and Finland neutral, they cannot support to have a one TV station uh, like RT, which is uh, not telling the Russian narrative, because if you look at what was RT, uh, it was giving uh, the opinion of both sides. You had uh, at the beginning of the tension in Ukraine, you had uh, really tough pro-Ukrainian people talking in, in, in RT, but talking and debating with very pro-Russian ones. And that was very important. And this type of, 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 of media has to be forbidden because it's too dangerous, because they know they cannot uh, control the public opinion. During the Mark Artist time, they controlled the public opinion in the United States. Who in the United States were listening to Radio Moscow in 1955? Almost nobody. RT America is on the top list of uh, uh, internet TV in United States, or rather was on the top list until it was forbidden. So it means what? Not that Russia is, is a good state. It means that people don't believe anymore in the Western regime. And that's why they have to be more and more authoritarian. And that's why they have to, to they cannot tolerate uh, neutral countries uh, as they did in the, when they were really, really strong. Yes, but um, I am scared uh, because there is the difference be between Finland and Ukraine. Finland is the part of the European Union. Yeah, and with right. all this ra racist mentality of, uh, uh, of Western Europeans, uh, uh, they, they see the difference between the uh, civilized, civilized uh, Finnish people and uh, and uh, slaves from Eastern Europe like Polish, <laughs> Belarusian, Ukrainian, not slave Slavs, <laughs> slave, sl slave Slavs. We, we, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we yeah, you're right. <laughs> we we are doing the the same ugly job uh, in, in uh, like immigrants. So yeah. uh, So uh, if uh, there will be some military tension between uh, Finland, Finland and Russia, it could be uh, be something very more than yeah, yeah, more you're right. for the peace in the world than in, in Ukraine, because in, yeah, in you're reality, right. Western countries, uh, as you said, they are fighting with Russia uh, until the life of the last Ukrainian. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It is very dangerous. But, you know, uh, a beast which is, who is going to die is much more dangerous than the beast uh, where, where, when this beast is very strong uh, and healthy. So we are going inside very dangerous time, not excluding world war, a, a hot world war. That's, of course, a a, a terrible uh, um, uh, possibility, but that's a possibility. The only uh, 
you know, the only thing we can hope is that uh, we will go through that uh, because on the long term, uh, this uh, capitalist uh, imperialist system is finishing. And um, even if uh, Russia is for sure not a socialist country, it's a very reactionary government now and so on, uh, the, uh, tr the economical and the social trend in the long run are pushing Russia, Russia back towards socialism as the whole world. There is a question about the uh, French uh, French politics and how mm -hmm. to detach the proletarians from the extreme right. You know, to a certain extent, it it's partly done now because, uh, uh, as I told you, uh, Mélenchon now, and it was different earlier, did receive quite a lot of voices from the uh, um, uh, the uh, young generation, young working class generation. So it's hopefully going in the good direction. Whatever we think about the Mélenchon, it's another another question. But uh, of course, you have still quite a lot of workers who are uh, for voting for Marine Le Pen. Uh, I would hope. Uh, that uh, these are uh, uh, finishing trends, uh, but I don't know. Um, basically, uh, you know, when you have a tough uh, radical left, uh, people are going toward you, but you have to, to have a third radical left. It means tough radical left means people taking risks. You know, when we had the, the um, um, uh, yellow vests, we had people taking risks. Unfortunately, the uh, leftist bureaucrats didn't take street with them at that time. Uh, people by themselves took the street and took risks because, you know, quite a lot of them lost their eyes, uh, which is not very uh, pleasant, as you can suppose. So um, uh, 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 now we have to, to have uh, leftist militants uh, that are ready to take the street, take risks and lose their eyes. I have some good news. Uh, I heard that uh, uh, when they make a sociolo uh, sociological uh, analysis of who voted for Macron, is that Macron was very popular in the population who are not working. He's very popular yeah. in the people more than 65 years. And he is very popular in the young people who are not uh, not starting working. So people who yeah. don't know uh, what is the, what is life, what is alive. But uh, this uh, population from 25 until 65, the uh, Macron was very weak in this. Uh, yeah, so, that's uh, right. So, you know, that's the basic materialistic reality. You know, when you have a material condition, you begin to understand your condition. Uh, it's better, of course, when you have a vanguard party explaining you uh, all that in a, in a rational way. But even if you don't have a, 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 a materialistic party, you more or less understand who are your enemies. Um, the problem in France was that uh, people, uh, you know, working class people identified that Macron and former uh, president were their enemies. Just the question was who, uh, who was fighting against Macron and all that bunch of, of exploiters. Uh, uh, in the left, it was not anymore the case. So, I mean, concretely, uh, people went on the right because of that. Uh, on the demagogy, of course, of Le Pen and, and, and Zemmour and all that people. But basically, um, the reason is there. You know, the, the, the um, right wing are strong because left wings are, are not working, are not doing their job. Uh, and that's the situation of European left, basically of European left. It's not the situation of the left in other countries of the world. You know that now we can't to, uh, set Zemur because there is a new law in Poland that forbidden letter Z. <laughs> <laughs> so it is uh, President Ukraine, Elenski, uh, yeah. Emu, and we uh, can. Uh, and by the way, they will for, uh, forbid the, the uh, film about Greek uh, dictatorship, which is called Z. 
Uh, what? Uh, it, it, it's a tra it's a film. Ah, no, it's an old film, but it's a classic of of the of the cinema. Uh, it's a French film, but on, on about Greece uh, um, during the, the you know the dictatorship of the army dictatorship, and the film was called Z because Z in ancient Greek Greece. You know what means Z in ancient Greek? It means I am free. Ah. <laughs> so, so in Poland, it's forbidden to be free now. But as you know, you know it very well from your own situation <laughs> when you were going at the police office. Okay, so I think that um, if, if we'll not speak uh, bef between uh, before first May, we can already say to. To yes, push, of course. To push all the viewers to celebrate in your cities, in your factories, yeah. where you can the the solidarity of the international solidarity of the world. International right? solidarity against war, for peace, and against imperialism, because there is no war without imperialism. Okay, so I will finish this.